I asked ChatGPT the most difficult questions in urban planning. But first, I answer those same questions to see if artificial intelligence is better than a real life city planner. I'm Dominic, I'm a city planner. If you're interested in cities, economic development, or planning, subscribe for more videos. That's a good one. People might not like that, but... <laughs> Why do I never see anybody riding in the bike lane? This is a good question. Everybody's guilty of this. What is New York City's nickname? The Big Apple. New York City is commonly known by the nickname The Big Apple. Which city is known as the Emerald City? Seattle. Seattle is known as the Emerald City. What state produces the most cheese in the U.S.? Wisconsin. Wisconsin produces the most cheese in the United States. What is the hottest state in the U.S.? Arizona. Florida is often considered the hottest state in the U.S. based on its year-round average temperatures. However, Arizona frequently records the highest temperatures. Wow. How many time zones are there in the U.S.? Four. What? The United States has a total of six time zones. How can cities get rid of traffic? Traffic is caused by a lot of people going to the same place at the same time. To reduce traffic, you really have to think like a psychologist and economist. People choose their mode of commuting based on the fastest way to get to their place, the least expensive way, and the most comfortable way. So if you want to get more people off the road that are causing the traffic, you have to make public transportation, so taking the train, bus, or subway, faster, more comfortable, and less expensive than driving. So think about how bad public transportation in the United States must be if most people still choose to drive their car to work and sit in traffic every single morning to and from work. When I worked in Boston, I took the train every day to work because it was less expensive and faster to get to work every single day than sitting in my car. Another solution is, if you think more like an economist, is if you want less of something, increase the price of it. Congestion pricing does work because you basically just put a price on traffic. How much is someone willing to pay to drive on that street at a particular time? People might not like that, but if you want less of something, just increase the price of it. Public transportation improvements. Active transportation infrastructure. Congestion pricing. Urban planning and zoning. Flexible work schedules and remote work. Smart traffic management. Carpooling and ride sharing. Discouraging car ownership. Autonomous vehicles and public awareness and behavior change. How can cities reduce the cost of housing? For cities to reduce the cost of housing, they need to increase the supply of housing and different types of housing. By increasing the supply of housing, by allowing more single family homes, allowing more duplexes, allowing more apartments, you're going to increase the supply, which is gonna put downward pressure on prices. And then secondly, you can't just allow more housing, you have to allow different types of housing. So a lot of people get frustrated when they see hundreds if not thousands of new units being built in their city or town. They're seeing these large residential buildings, these five over one style buildings that all look the same and rents are only increasing. Nobody is seeing prices decrease in their city or towns. So they're saying, well, I've seen supply increase. Why is the price of housing still increasing? And this is because a lot of cities and towns zone about 90% of their land for only detached single family homes. So as a result, that 10% of land that allows for more dense housing is gonna get those larger luxury style buildings that are gonna have the rents of 2,000, 3,000, $4,000 a month because such a small percentage of land area is allowed for denser housing. So by increasing the types of housing, by allowing what planners call gentle density, by allowing a single family homeowner to add an accessory dwelling unit, by allowing some neighborhoods to have two families or three unit buildings, you're gonna allow the smaller scale developers, the, the non black rocks of the world to actually actually increase the housing supply and increase the different types of housing to hopefully put downward pressure on the cost of housing. Increase housing supply. Promote affordable housing. Enhance rent control and tenant protections. Encourage mixed income communities. 
address land and construction costs, improve public transportation, encourage cooperative and community land trust models, monitor and mitigate speculation, support homelessness prevention, and promote economic development and wage growth. Why do I never see anyone riding in the bike lane? If you don't see any cyclists riding in the bike lane, I would say the first reason is probably because that bike lane might not be safe. Is it just green paint? Is there actually no separation from the cyclists and the cars? Because if it's not safe, no one's really gonna wanna use that bike lane. But if it is a safe, separated bike lane where someone can feel comfortable riding to work without fear of risking their life, then I would say it's much more efficient to move a hundred or a thousand cyclists through an area than it is to move a hundred or a thousand cars through that same area. Bike lanes only require about five or eight feet of pavement, whereas cars require about 10 foot travel lanes, if not 12 or 13 foot travel lanes. So to have two lanes of cars, you're taking up 24, 36 feet of roadway, whereas a bike lane only requires about five or eight feet. So bike lanes are inherently more efficient because they can move such a higher volume of cyclists through a certain area area compared to single occupancy vehicles. So if a bike lane's empty, one, it might not be safe, it might just be some green paint, and two, they're probably already at their place of employment. Lack of infrastructure, traffic concerns, lack of awareness or comfort, cycling culture, time of day or season, or route preferences. How do you reduce vehicles speeding on my street? Speeding is a function of a street's design. So if you have a street that is designed to allow cars to go 40 or 50 miles per hour, it doesn't matter if you put up a speed sign that says 20 miles per hour is the speeding limit. If you feel comfortable driving 40, you're gonna drive 40 and everybody's guilty of this. To reduce speeding on streets, you can introduce traffic calming measures like pinch points, bump outs, street trees, on street parking, chicanes, maybe even a speed table that will make the design of the street less conducive to speeding so you can return some peace and quiet to your residential street. Engage with local authorities. Traffic calming measures, community involvement, infrastructure changes, and temporary measures. What is your favorite city in the United States? My favorite city in the United States is Seattle. I think Seattle blends the natural and urban environment together like no other United States city I've been to. You have uh, a great urban environment that is so green and lush. You have mountains, the water, and a city all in the same place. So um, I've just always personally loved Seattle. I love the Pacific Northwest. I think it has a little bit of everything. I don't have personal favorites, but I can tell you that many people love cities like New York for its energy, San Francisco for its scenery, and New Orleans for its culture. When will artificial intelligence replace city planners? I'd say never. I don't think AI can replace a city planner's job because much of what city planners do is so people-oriented. You're really responding to the needs of the community. Technically, you should probably be more proactive as planners, but a lot of it is very reactionary, where you're trying to uh, improve public space. You're reviewing new land development projects. People want to build new housing. People want to build new commercial space, and you're reviewing that. You're making recommendations to boards and commissions. Uh, you're listening to the neighbors. So I would say it's a very people-oriented profession, and I think that it won't be replaced by AI anytime soon. Here's why AI won't entirely replace city planners. Urban planning involves complex human context, ethical and moral judgment, regulatory and political environment, and creativity and vision. 